Today's class is entitled Decorating Your Family Tree. Our presenter is Michelle Karen. Sister Karen has a special interest in this topic as well as a talent for all things creative. We appreciate her willingness to share her ideas and help us tell the stories of our ancestors so we can preserve them and help others be aware of their personal stories, challenges, and sacrifices and accomplishments and appreciate the fact that these are not just names that we're putting in, these are people. We'll now turn the time over to Sister Karen. Thanks, Brother Esplin. I appreciate that introduction. That was, that was very nice. Decorating our family tree. Last week, we talked about how to take our memories and digitize them. Today, we're going to talk about where to put those digital memories. And if you missed last week's class, then um, feel free to look in our Sunday class archives and you should see the slideshow there, actually the presentation there, but I've also shared the slideshow so that you can look at the slides if you missed anything. But I'm just going to continue a little bit along the vein of what I said last time, talking about our precious things. So we have memorabilia, we have pictures, so many items. And I have always, since I was a little girl, loved anything that was old, especially if it was owned by any of my relatives. And so I have quite a collection. Really in my family, there are not a lot of people that like old, seemingly useless things, but I love them and I find them very, very, very useful. We're going to talk about taking items and condensing items into memories and using the Memories app by Family Search to do that, which I have found is the easiest, quickest way to do it. I just love the app. So this is what the app looks like if you go to the App Store or Google Play, the store there. It looks like this little green tree, and it's not to be confused with the Family Search Family Tree app. So they can look kind of similar, but this is entirely a different app. It is linked to your family search account. So anything that you post will show up that you have posted it will be shared as well to anybody that you post it to and tag it to. So anyone else in the family tree who has that person in their tree have access to those memories. It is a one-stop shop for really publishing memories into the world. And that is so amazing. One of my favorite things is when I go onto my family search front page and there's a new picture there because that's where pictures appear of relatives in our family tree. And it'll tell you who posted it, when it was posted, but that is so exciting to me, especially if it's somebody that I don't know the person that posted it, but it's a relative of mine. And it makes me think that is so amazing that someone that I don't even know has memories, has pictures of my family members, and they are sharing it with me so that I can see them. I just love it. So that's why we love the Memories app, and they've made it so easy to do that. So I just want to review a little bit about um, last week, we talked about the importance of capturing and preserving our family history. And when I'm talking about that specifically, I'm talking about photos, memorabilia, stories, anything that we can add to family search to help a person come alive rather than just be a name sitting there on our tree. The best thing about it is our memories can live forever on Family Search. Family Search is a very secure place. It is a very good place to have digital copies of things. If you're nervous, you can keep a digital copy as well on your hard drive. But I feel like Family Search is a great place. And from what I've learned, there is really not a limit to what you can put up there. I think right now I've heard 5,000 items, pictures that you can put on. When we get more than that, it just slows down a little bit. So it's pretty vast. You could put a lot of things up on Family Search. 
But I really loved this idea. Today, I looked at, um, I went online and I was just looking at some things about the Memories app. And these quotes here on the left-hand side are, the bottom two are actually from Family Search. They said, your memories can live forever on Family Search. That is amazing because we may have pieces of paper, we may have bits of fabric, we may have something metal, something plastic, whatever we have that reminds us and links us to a loved one. And those things over time, they will decay, they'll get lost, they will lose their meaning. But on Family Search, it is there forever and it is shared with our family members. And so how amazing is that? And then as we do this, these connections, as the quote says here on the bottom, can be a source of great joy and help us understand our own personal identity. I love that thought. I love the idea of understanding who I am by understanding who my ancestors are. And I'm just going to show you a couple little things here that I have. I have this little hummingbird and it's metal. And it's just a little, a little trinket. But this bird sat in my father's house in Arizona. And when he went to move from that house, I remember I really wanted this little hummingbird because number one, it had always been there. But number two, there were so many hummingbirds in their home that would come. And that was always such a great topic of conversation for us. And what I remember about it is not having grown up with my dad, I realized that he liked a lot of the same things that I do. And one of those things is birds and animals, any kind of a creature, but specifically birds. And so we really shared this. So when I look at this little piece of metal, I don't just see a metal bird. I can feel the feelings that I felt when I was there with him in Arizona and we were building that connection together. We were talking about our love of birds and and really I find it so, I found it so interesting like wow. I that's where I get that. That's why I love birds so much. That's why I love animals and wildlife and it's my dad. This is just how a physical memory, a piece of memorabilia can actually connect us. I'm going to show you one more because I really love this one. If you can see this, I have got a, it's just a long case, I guess you would call it. And you can hear it jiggles. And on the top here, look at this. So it has this lid. When you take it off, it has got all different sizes of knitting needles. These are old. This is, this is from the 60s. So every size that you can think of, we've got these knitting needles. Now, unfortunately, I did not inherit my grandmother's gift for knitting, but I definitely inherited her love of creativity and creating things and making things beautiful. And so when I look at these knitting needles, it's actually choking me up right now. I feel my grandmother's, I feel connected with my grandmother because I can, I realized years ago, wow, that's where I got that. I am just like my grandma in those ways. So I can take these things, put them on family search as a picture and maybe do a little write-up of why they are meaningful. And wouldn't that be interesting to look at one of your ancestors, maybe somebody you've never met before, and see a little story about them and know, oh, this guy loved hummingbirds. And so did his daughter. And wow, so do I. So we share that. We have that in common. Or this person loved creating things. She loved knitting. She um, loved to beautify her surroundings. And I love that too. So that's why it's so important to take what we have, especially when we have information about those things. So this little bird and these little knitting needles, unless I put a label on it and say exactly what they represent, exactly where they're from, my daughters are not likely going to know exactly what they are and be able to pass that on. 
But if I have them up on family search, a picture and maybe a little story to go along with them, what they mean, why they're important, then look what that did. That memory is saved forever. And so that is why this is so, so important. Okay, so the first thing you have to do if you haven't already done it is to download the app. Now, if you wanna do that right now, that would be fine. I can just chat, I'll chat a little bit longer, but it probably would be good as we're going along to do this together so that I can show you exactly how it works and how easy it is. You are going to love it. My daughter and I did this during our COVID summer. We decided we were going to gather all of our pictures and digitize them and add them onto Family Search. And it was really funny because as we added big batches of pictures, I started getting emails and the emails would say that my pictures were restricted by Family Search for some reason. And so it's good to kind of know the parameters. I did find that you can always respond to these emails and say, well, no, actually this is what this picture means. This is what it's representing. A lot of times it is just the computer that kind of puts a red flag on things. And so if you respond and talk to a real person and help them see that it's nothing against the guidelines, then a lot of times they will just approve it. However, there are a few things. So for instance, they won't let any war hunting, fishing photos, anything like that. I had put a picture up of my great, great grandmother and she was just holding an old rifle and her family had been out hunting and she was just there holding the rifle and we were not able to put that on family search, but it's right here. And it says, you know, you can't have hunting or guns, things like that. So if you have any questions about that, you can always ask them. It's really funny because I, as I said here, I, I really started feeling a little bit like a rebel, like what pictures are we putting on here? But they're really careful to make sure that the pictures are not offensive to anyone or will not trigger any problems or traumatic reaction, things like that. So just as long as they're nice and clean, that they're not vulgar, nothing is made fun of, then you should, you should be fine. Okay, so we talked about this, how to access the app. So you can just go to the app store. And again, it is also Google Play and it is the memories app and it's got the green tree. So when you do that, you should be able to download it and know what it is. So now we're gonna talk about the purpose of the memories app. Here, most of us have seen a Charlie Brown Christmas or know what a Charlie Brown tree is. I've even, even seen them sold in stores. So here's our Charlie Brown Christmas tree. This is just a screenshot of my family tree, a little bit of it without any pictures, without anything. I call this my Charlie Brown tree. This is functional. Of course, it's still you, it's still my family tree and it's still got these family members on, it's got locations, so it has a lot of good information. However, here is, look at the difference between this tree and that tree. So let's just go back one. So we have this, we have mainly names and such. Look what a difference just having one picture makes to a person's profile. Look at this, this becomes tree of memories and stories. When we look at these pictures, I want to know more about these people. Here they are. Look at their faces. It just makes it more interesting. So this is a fuller, more lushly decorated tree. Now I have even tried in people that I have further back, maybe in the 1700s where it's not likely that I will have a picture for them. I try to pick something from their life, a location, a year, something about them maybe to put up as their profile picture. So for instance, my family came, part of my family immigrated from Canada into Canada, and then they came into Upper Michigan and they were woodsmen. And so they worked in the timber industry. One family specifically, I knew that is what they did. And I visited where they all lived. And while I was there, I took some pictures of where they worked and where they stayed. 
just their environment. And so sometimes I will do something like maybe I'll put a landscape picture up there just because that's where the people lived. So something meaningful to them or maybe something from their trade, maybe what they did, just because it makes it more interesting instead of just a lonely little person by themselves on the tree. So some of us are going to have awesome, big, lush trees because we have really eager, wonderful genealogists who have already done a lot of work for us. But you may be like me. I had, my tree was very sad on both sides. So I have got a lot of work to do and I've added a lot of things. So no matter where you are, you can only go up. So don't worry about feeling overwhelmed or feeling like, oh, I'm never gonna get this done. Just plug along and do your best. So we've talked a little bit about why we want to add pictures and memories to our tree. I love this quote here by Linda Hogan. And she says, suddenly all my ancestors are behind me. Be still, they say, watch and listen. You are the result of the love of thousands. And I did mention before that when we better get to know our ancestors, we better get to know ourselves. And so we have these people behind us who have made us who we are. And we want to honor those loved ones, honor those people by adding to their profiles and making more of their personality come up, maybe more of who they are. So that's why it's so, so important. And so here, I talk about this all the time, my poor little pile of lost souls pictures that when I sat with my grandmother, she gave me a box and I asked her, who are these people? Where are they from? There were several that she did not know. And no matter what we did, there was no one else that um, my grandma died at 99. And so there, there really was no one else in her family that could look at those pictures and even guess of who they were. And so I've just got this stack of pictures that we don't know who they are or where they're from or how they fit in. And so it's our job to make sure that that does not happen to the pictures and the memories in our own possessions. So get on those pictures and make sure that there are, they are labeled, make sure that you have them organized so that if something were to happen to you today, someone after you would be able to pick that up and say, okay, this is who this person is. So our little pile of lost souls here, who are they? We don't know. And we don't, they're just a mystery. And so if this happens, to our ancestors, how will they be remembered? How are their efforts and how are their contributions to society, to our lives be remembered? They won't. And that's why this is so very important. All right, so we're gonna talk about some of the things that I decorate our tree with. And some you have probably thought of, maybe a few you haven't, pictures. So important, as long as they're preserved, documented, and accessible. Now, I love these two pictures. This is my great, great, great uncle and his wife. And I was working in family search and gathering memories, gathering pictures, and really thinking about my ancestors and digitizing and adding to their tree and it was around the same time I had someone contact me. They contacted me on Ancestry. And this lady said, oh, I can see that these, these people, you are working on them. I've seen you've done some work on them. And she said, I was at a yard sale and, he, and she's in Elkhart, Indiana, which is where my family is from. And I found these pictures and a written family tree. So someone had written out in longhand in cursive this family tree. And she said, would you be interested in this? And so of course I, yes, I am. She sent it to me and I was able to put these pictures up on family search. So what is really interesting to me, I find that as I work with memories or anything in family history really, but specifically with my tree, I really 
can feel that my ancestors, they want to be found. They want to be recognized. Of course, this does not happen very often, something miraculous like this, but how amazing is that? And I felt very connected with this couple. And so as you're working in this, I can promise you from my own experience that you will be able to feel guidance and the presence of loved ones who have gone before. And that is really, really an amazing feeling. So pictures, stories. So these are all things that we can do with the Memories app. Now, stories can be oral. We can actually record a story with our voices or we can write it. Here, I've got two examples right here, Saturdays with Dad. This is a an audio story that my mom-in-law recorded about her father. And so anybody that has that knows her father and is in the tree can hear this story. And then right here is a little story that I wrote about a picture that I had. So I had a picture and on the back of it, thank heavens, somebody had written just a little sketch about this. It was about um, my great, great grandfather and his, actually my great, great, great grandfather and his horse Blackie. And so that's something that we can put up onto Family Search. So like I said, we can put our little, you know, here's my little hummingbird again, something like this, but unless it is attached to meaning, unless we say why that is there, it's less effective, I would have to say. Here's some other things that I have put onto Family Search. This is the life story of my grandmother. Both she and my grandfather went out one winter and just wrote their stories, and they are treasures. They are amazing. This is something that we can put up on Family Search as a document, as a PDF document. And this is something that's probably better done obviously with our computer rather than our phone. But I sometimes will just even take a picture of the front of it and put it on there and attach a little um, note of what it is and what it means. Over here on this, on the right here, we have this little diary that I found in my grandpa's house when he passed away. And it is a 1940 diary of just his day-to-day -day life. And I took it and again, I, I took his little life story and I looked up anything he mentioned. So he mentioned an ice skating rink they went to. He mentioned a YMCA where he and his friends went. He mentioned a roller skating rink. He mentioned movies that he went to. So I went out and found all of these things, pictures and articles about all the things that he had mentioned. So I was able to put that on to Family Search. But this, look at how cool the picture of this with his handwriting it is. He is here, he's saying he's still, it's still blowing and cold. Um, the funny thing is, again, living in Michigan, these ancestors, wow, like every other page, Grandpa's talking about how he was snowed out or slipped off the road in his car or what happened. It's always cold and blowing there in Michigan. So that is a really interesting little tidbit to put up. Something else that we can put onto with our memories app is interviews. I have interviewed some of my family members and recorded them. We can either put the recording on there or this is an, this is an example of a written recorded interview. And so it's kind of like a little a play script. And I just love that. I think it's really cute to read it. You can see there's a laugh in here, a bunch of laughs actually. So, so when they were having this conversation, they were having a good time and that's really fun to see. Okay. So here are some other things. So these are the artifacts that I have. So we have programs, newspaper articles, handmade items, tools, awards, any physical artifacts of a person's life. So here we have a quilt made by one of my great, great grandmothers, an article about my grandfather, and then this is a, a bronze star that he was awarded in World War II. 
Here I've got it up and guess what? Those are going to last forever because I have them. Even though that little quilt is going to fray one day and disintegrate the paper that that newspaper article was printed on is getting pretty crispy. And so it's not that long for this world, but it is saved forever because I have put it on Family Search and attached it to somebody. Okay, so here we go. This is what it looks like in the app store. Hopefully you, I have talked a long time and given you some time to download the Family Search Memories app. And so we'll keep going. Okay, so once we have the Memories app, when we bring it up, so right here on the left, we're bringing it up. And then this is what it looks like. The home screen of the Memories app, one thing to remember about it is when we push that button, it kind of looks like we missed a step, like, wait, where are we already? It just brings you right to all of your memories that you personally have put onto Family Search. So these are the memories that I have brought on. Now, up at the top, you can see the icons under where it says memories. We have pictures, stories, documents, and audio. And I'm going to explain about what all of those are, but that's it. This is your page. Those are really the main icons that you're going to worry about, except for the magic button. And I will talk to you about the magic button. The magic button is the green button. So if you have the Memories app downloaded, bring it up and you can see there is a little green plus right there. Basically, that is your avenue to add anything to Family Search, to add anything to our memories. And again, this will just keep, this app will just have your memories that you have added. So if I add a memory to my grandmother, it's going to show up in that this memories app. However, if my aunt added a memory to that grandmother, it will not show up in this memories section. It will show up on my grandmother's profile and I can see that, but this is simply your memories, anything that you have added. So once we push the plus button over, the next thing that we have to do is tell it, what do we want to add? So we're saying, I want to add something. Here's what I want to add. Do, do we want to add a document, write a story, add audio, or a photo? So those are the four choices. Those are the basics. So basically what you're doing is you're adding something and those are your four categories. Once we actually push, say that we want to add something. So here's an example, plus, I push the plus, and then remember here on this back screen, when we push the plus, these little icons come up and it's just saying, well, what do you want to add? So I pushed that, I pushed add photo. Right here at the bottom, you can see there's a little landscape. So I want to add a photo and it adds you, it asks you, where do you want to get this from? Do you want to take a photo? Do you want to get it from your camera roll? Do you want to get it from files on your phone somewhere? Um, or maybe a Google Drive or wherever you may keep pictures. Um, I personally keep pictures in, um, in my Apple Photos. And I love it because it's an easy way to make albums, an easy way just to save anything. It's easy to find, retrieve. So that's where I keep them. But no matter where you keep them, you have to decide. Um, I advise to take a bunch of photos and take the pictures first. Again, in the last class um, called Picture This, I go into detail about how to do that. But once you have a bunch of pictures and they appear on your camera roll, you're going to put camera roll and then it's going to bring up your camera roll. So right over here, you can see, here's my camera roll. I clicked the picture that I want to add, and then I click add up at the top. So once I did that, it brings up the picture. Now, if we add a bunch of pictures, no matter how many we add onto our memories app, but we do not tag a picture, then they are only visible to us 
in our memories. So for instance, this is a picture of my dad. Even if I take this picture and add it to my memories app, if that's all I do and I don't attach it to someone, then I am the only one that can see that. And it does no benefit to anyone other than me if I wanna just go see that picture. So this is so, so important is we have to tag pictures. And that simply means attaching it to whoever that picture belongs to. Whose profile should that picture be seen on? Um, and you can tap multiple people. You can tag multiple people to be seen. You know, if there's a group picture, um, I sometimes will even take a picture like this and tag that picture maybe to my dad. And for some purposes, for some reasons, I might want to tag it also to my grandmother if I'm telling a story maybe about my dad and my grandmother. So there are a lot of instances, but just know that that is so, so important that we have to tag them or else it's just again, there for our use. So the way that we do that is we are going to tag, there are green buttons on the bottom. Once you selected your picture and put add, it is going to give you this picture right here and you'll see these icons on the bottom. Um, this is a topic tag. So if you want everything in your album to be labeled, um, summer 1963, anything that you want to be labeled that, then it'll group all those pictures together. If you wanna make a comment about the picture, you can make a comment down here. You can say a story about the picture. So you can do a little audio clip about that picture. But the most important tag is what? Tag, 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 tag people. So that's your most important icon. So down here at the bottom, you can see there's a little person and there's a one on it, and that's because I, I already tagged it. But we're going to click on that person. And then what we're going to do is we are going to tap on the picture. Try this. If you have the app, go ahead and just try this with me. It doesn't matter if it is not a picture that you want on Family Search. We can take it off really easily. But you're going to tap the face of the person you want to tag. And when you see this little white circle appear, there comes a little box. Now in that box, you can start typing a name. If it is a person in your tree, and I highly suggest that it is a person in your tree because that's our whole point is tagging it to people. Then you can see as I started typing my dad's name in, it brought up my dad right here on the top. So this is the person that I want to attach it to. Now it also gives me the option to add a new person. So we can do that, but then we're gonna have to go in and add information for that new person in our tree. So if you have a new person, this is a little bit more of a convoluted way to do that. I suggest going into your tree, adding the people first and then adding, attaching the memory, memory to them. So as I started typing, Family Search brings up a list of possibilities. There might be five Gregs in my tree. I pick the one that I want and then the name appears. So the name appears right below where the little white circle is. And so I know this person, it's tagged to the right person. And now super important here as well, we wanna click done. So that's kind of like our save button. So we're tagging our person and we're gonna click done. Yes, then that person is tagged. So now this picture will be available to anyone that has this person in their family tree. Also an important note to remember, it will only appear if the person is deceased. So for privacy issues, you can put, I can put pictures up on family search. If the person is still living, that is only available to be seen in for me in my memories. And then once a person is marked deceased, then other people who has that person on their family tree can also see it. So just so that you know, and that's good to remember too, because actually you can put living people onto the memories. And we're going to talk a little bit about that too. There is a question in the chat. How does it associate to the family, mem family member's memory? Oh, okay. 
So it shows in their memory. So if I go, so this is my grandfather here, Robert Dale Freeman. If I put pictures up with the memories app and I tag him in it, then we can go to his profile and the pictures will be there. So I can see them. My Anybody else in my family who has this same person on their family tree can also see it. You can see right here, this is a way of tagging multiple, multiple people. So here I have my grandpa, my mother, and my aunt. And so you just do the same method. You just tap on there, write their name, and again, it will save to their profile. Since these people here in this picture, my grandfather is, um, is deceased, but my mom and my aunt are not. So my grandpa is tagged in that picture. The picture can be seen, but my mom and my aunt are not tagged in it because since they're not deceased, their names won't appear on that or, or have it attached a family tree. But anybody that has my grandfather in the tree will be able to see the picture. It's just that I can't, I can tag these people, but they're only, I just call them placeholder people in my tree until they are deceased. And then, well, once they're deceased, they actually kind of become live on family search. So let's talk a little bit about adding documents. So it's, it's really interesting. Documents can be a couple things. So it could be, for instance, let's say I have a, a document um, in my files. So a birth certificate or um, a marriage record, something like that. I may have it and I may, um, I may have scanned it into my files so I can have it on my phone, on Google Drive, I can have it on Apple or anywhere I may have it, then I can add that as a document and just put the, the document up there. You also can just take a photo and label that photo as a document. I have found it easier instead of trying to go find a file and add it to just take a picture of a document and add just label it as a document. So the way that we do that is we're just gonna, um, again, the green magic button, we're, we're going to say we wanna add something. We're telling the Memories app, I want to add a document. So we're gonna click on the little document icon, which looks like a little piece of paper. Okay, and then we're gonna go, again, it's gonna say, um, where do you wanna get this? So that's where we're gonna say from my camera roll because I took a picture of it or um, I downloaded it and it's on my hard drive or in my Google photos or in iPhoto somewhere. But if we've taken a picture of it, which I think is kind of the easiest thing to do, then we are just going to go to our camera. We're gonna say add. And again, it's gonna pop up and it's gonna ask you um, if it is a picture, it's going to say, where do you want to get it? And I'll say my camera roll. So once it comes up, it'll look like this. Since it's in the document area, it'll give you three dots and you tap those to add details. So this right here is an obituary for my great uncle. And I kind of liked the way that this whole page looked. I think it's so cool right here. We've got everything on this and it's kind of fun to see what else was going on the day that his obituary was published. But when, once we get the picture here, again, this is in documents. We said we wanted to add a document. So it's just a little different format than the pictures, a couple more steps. It's gonna ask you a couple things. So you can see over here on the details, I put Jerry O. Smith obituary. Now, I really didn't do a great job and I probably should remake this slide, but we could put a, a description on there. We could put the event date, the event place. That would be much more accurate and better. Down here in visibility, do we want this to be a public memory or a private memory? Again, if this is a living person on your tree, it automatically will be private. No one else will be able to see it but you. And I don't think that there are many reasons that you would want this to be a private memory for anyone else because you're putting it there so that we're making it available and we're attaching it to a person. So if you're not going to attach it to a person, I guess there are rare instances where you may just want to save something. 
But again, we want information to get out there. We want to make it public. So we want to, most things to be a public memory. And then down here at the bottom, you can classify it as a photo or a document. So this is a photo of a document that I took. So really what I'm doing is I am just simply labeling this photo as a document. And you can do that with birth certificates, anything else. It just kind of adds another step to your picture. So for instance, I'm not gonna take a family picture and say that's a document, but what I am, am I going to do? I might do a birth certificate, a death certificate, any kind of a, a legal document um, I want, I would want to make it as a document. Okay, and now we're gonna talk about the adding stories. So this is really fun and I love it because they've made it so easy. For those of us who may not love to write, we can do it with audio and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. But when we think of a story, we don't necessarily have to think of a big, long drawn out, five page, well-written story. A story can simply be an anecdote or it can even just be a little bit of information and detail attached to a picture. So when we click write story, all that means is we are directly entering that information in through the Memories app. Now, this is probably easier to do when we are on the computer, I would suggest just because it's kind of hard, but, but in a pinch, this is a great way if you're thinking, oh, I've got this, you know, just a little something I want to say. So you can attach pictures to stories. So that's kind of cool. They want you to, they, they're asking you, do you have a picture? So up here, you can add up to 10 images. Down here, you enter the title and then the story content. Now here's just a little example on the other side of the screen. Again, here is my great, great grandpa and he's on his little wagon here with his horse. And I wrote this little story about how this grandpa had enjoyed a little bit of some kind of a bootleg liquor and he fell asleep while he was driving. The horse ran off the road and got stuck, but then the horse was able to ride itself and get out of this situation. Some people came along and helped get that horse out and the, the horse just took grandpa home. So anyways, so here is an example of, this is a story and it's not very much longer than this. So as you can see, it can be a hundred words or 50 words just to give a little bit of interest to the picture. I'm gonna bring my little bird back again. Again, if I put a picture of this little bird up, wow, that's a hummingbird, okay? But if I write 50 words about how this reminds me of my father because we both enjoyed watching the hummingbirds from his back porch. And I learned that that is where I got my love for hummingbirds was from my father and this sat on his back porch for 20 years. So that makes it more interesting. And so that's how we can take artifacts, items that may not really seem significant and make them significant. Okay, so after we write that story up, we are going to save it. So we have to push save because we don't want all that writing to go to waste. So we're gonna save it. Again, we're gonna mark it as public or private. I would suggest put public things on here unless, I don't know, I just don't know why you would have something really private on there unless you really do not have anywhere else to save it. But if you have something private on there, you have to be sure that somebody has access to your memories with your login, you know, your login name and your password. So maybe someone make sure someone in your family has access so that that story isn't just lost when you pass away or become unable to do that. So if we want to make any changes to our story, say we found a word that was misspelled or anything, we want to delete it. So we're going to remember after we push save, you're going to see this little screen pop up and you can do any of these actions. You can edit it. Um, you can add details, add it to an album, 
move it to an archive, or you can delete it. So that's how we do that. Okay, and so here's how we do audio. And I really love, I love audio because to me, having something on there is so much better than having nothing. So if you are more inclined to just maybe answer a question or tell a story, at least get your audio on there and um, it can be transcribed and written into a story or somebody can hear your voice. Wouldn't it be great if we had audio of everybody's voice in our tree? That would just be amazing. Again, we're gonna go to our magic green button and we are going to say add audio. And now it's going to ask you, you may have something already on your phone. Let's say somebody said something, or for instance, I have been at my grandmother's house and pushed record on my phone just so that I could capture her voice. So I would save that as an audio file on my phone. This allows you to retrieve that. So if you want to get it from your phone, you can do that. Or if you just want to tell a story right there, you can do it just by pushing the button. And so once you choose, if you wanna record it or import a file, it's going to bring up this next box. Now, this I love because it's kind of getting you started on your own family history. If you want to maybe record a little about your life but have no idea where to start, then the family search generates questions for you to answer. So let's say you want to just start telling your life story. Well, you can hear you can. What is a memorable moment from your childhood? What do you remember about the place you grew up? How did you meet your spouse? What are some moments that impacted your life most? What would you like to tell your family who might hear this in the future? I love that, that we can embellish our family trees with richness by having our voice there. And so that's pretty amazing. Now, Again, no one will be able to hear this until after you are deceased. And once you're deceased, then it will become accessible. However, we can record stories or information about those that are deceased. So if we're not here, just to answer a question about our lives, we're just going to click begin recording down at the bottom. And it says, don't see a question you wanna ask, begin recording. Well, even if you weren't there to answer a question, it'll bring that up. So what you're going to do, it'll allow you to uh, begin recording right there, and it will also allow you to tag it to a person. Okay, so remember, that is what is so important, is once we've recorded something, it'll give you the option of who you want to tag it to, and you're going to have to save it. So that was one step that I did not have on these slides. So that's just recording. If you have a general story, However, if you wanna add audio to a picture, here's how you do that. So here we have this picture of my family and I'm just going to click the little microphone icon and then it brings this up and it says record audio about this photo. And I can talk up to five minutes about that photo. And then I'll push start. And once I am finished, once it's recorded, you can see I recorded a whopping 13 seconds about this picture, but once that is finished, and since these people are already tagged in the picture, this will also just automatically tag to that picture to the people in that picture. So once it's recorded, it looks like this. So that's how we do audio. That's kind of a nice way, maybe if you don't wanna type things about a picture, you can just do audio and at least that gives you some information about it. We're gonna talk a little about albums now. And this is kind of a nice place for you to just save your memories and they're safe forever with Family Search. Here they are in an album and we're gonna talk about how to add something to an album. So to add a picture to an album, we are not going to push the green button. We are going to actually click onto either the picture or the document, whatever it is. So you can see this has brought up my whole memories app. And so I am going to add this picture. This is my little daughter, Abby. And so I clicked onto Abby 
and it brings up her picture with three dots up on the top. And I'm going to click on those dots. So I'm just saying, hey, I wanna do something with this picture. So here are my options. I can add details to it. I can rotate it. So that's kind of nice to know. Sometimes we might accidentally wrote, put it on there incorrectly. I can add it to an album. I can delete it, move it to an archive. So if I want to add it to an album, I'm going to click add it to an album. And when that picture is chosen, it'll ask me, do you want to create a new album or do you want to add it to another album. So here are some options that I have. These are some of the albums that I have. So on this one, I decided to create a new album. I wanted to create an album just for Abby. And so I'm saying, okay, a new album, Abigail Karen, it's going to ask you what you want it to be named. And then the picture looks like this when it is added to the albums. Here we have her name, her album name, and I've added to this album. Okay, now one thing, if some of you that have really been listening may have noticed something that I did not do on that picture, I did not tag my daughter. So it, either if it's a picture you've already tag, tagged, it will automatically go there, but I still need to tag this picture to make sure. She's still living so no one can see it, but me. However, one day I want that picture able to be seen. So we want to make sure, again, everything is tagged. See, I caught myself here. If we want to see all of our albums that we have at the very bottom of the very front page of our Memories app, when we first open it up, you can see on the bottom, we can look at my memories. That's what the default that it opens up onto. Everything you've put on there will appear on that front page, your front page news. But if you wanna see the albums that you have, you're just gonna click the albums and then it brings up this album, this pictures, icon pictures of your albums. So the titles and we have one picture of them. If you wanna start a new album, you're just going to click the green plus that is in a little folder. And so you're saying, I wanna do a new album. So that's how we do that. Okay, so that was really, really fast, I know. Hopefully you were able to learn something from it. You can always go back and watch this presentation later or just Google how to do this. And there are lots of videos of how to add memories. But just to recap, here's some things we want to remember. If no record, picture, artifact, story, is attached to a person and they pass away, then that person, unless it's accessible somewhere else, and this is, I feel like the best place to be accessible, that person will not have those memories attached to them. So they will kind of drift away. And eventually for those who've come after, that person will just kind of trickle away and not cease to exist for posterity. So it is so important for us to do this and to make sure that we're using the Memories app correctly, we want to be sure to tag people. So you want to attach pictures to people so that they enhance that person's profile, round it out, and make it interesting to see. And as you do this, as I've mentioned before, our ancestors, I have found they really want to be found. They want to be known. And so I know that I have been blessed in my life by working with my ancestors, memorabilia, photos, stories, and that the more that we do this, we will learn more about them and more about ourselves. That is my presentation. Thank you so much for joining us.